Hi, and welcome to this video. Today I will be talking about singly linked list. On the left here, I'll be walking through some slides, and on the right here, I will code as we walk through the slides. The theory will help enforce the practical code and vice versa. So a brief introduction to singly linked list. This is how it looks like. Uh, it's basically a list node that contains a value and a pointer where the pointer points to the next node in the linked list. At the end, the last node points up to a null. A sentinel list node is basically a pseudo head that just keeps track of when is the first node. The sentinel node does not hold or reference any data. It, it is basically used as an alternative to null to determine the start of the linked list. So let's start writing some code. Let's start by defining the class node. So a class node, we just call it a list node, sorry, which is this. When it's called, we want it to take in one value, x. This x is the value that it should have, x. Um, in the case of the central node, it will be none or zero, uh, and that we will create it in the next uh, class. So basically here, x will be the value two, and next will be none, because we don't know which list node it will connect to. So this class, we simply have initiated one template of these list nodes. Next, let's create a linked list. Again, we will initiate and it will take um, nothing at first. A linked list will naturally be zero the first time you initiate it and the head here will be the list node zero or none. So we are saying that the central node in this case is this one right here which is the head and it has zero. So this calls this class right here and it initiates an empty one. So we have basically just laid the groundwork for a linked list. Now, a linked list has several functions. You can add a list node to the head. You can add a node to the tail, which is at the end, or you can add anywhere in the middle. You can also delete. So let's say you want to delete the second one or you want to delete the third one. And finally, if you want to get the value of an index node, say you want to get the value of the second node or the first node or so on and so forth. So I just spoke about several uh, several um, operations that can be carried out by the, by the linked list. So before I continue with the other slides, um, let's, let's just write it uh, some of the operations here just so you can start building the picture. So as I said, there will be added head and head is right here. We want to add a value to the head. Um, this is this will take self and a value. So it's just called this val. It will take a value which will be right here and this will be an int and it will return nothing. It just adds a value to the head. And for uh, for for those who are curious, it will simply be add at index zero val. Oh, hold on a second. What is this added index? That's another class. Uh, sorry, that's another method that I will define later. So I'll just keep it this way for now. So we want to add value at index zero, which is right here with the value one or two or three or whatever value you would like that to be. And this is the importance of having a sentinel value because it will, this value will then point to the head. We need something to point at the head. Similarly, if you want to add a value to the tail, again, self, and val is just going to be an int, and it will have none in return. Again, self added index, which we haven't defined yet. And this time, get me the size of the list node, and that will be the last value. So if the size is five, then you wanna, when you add something at the tail, which is the end here, then this is basically where it will be added and you wanna add that value. So you're pointing out at the index and you're pointing out at the value. 
So let's go to the next slide here, and it will have a nice uh, illustration. So here we see um, we can add an index, we can add a head, and we can add a tail. And I briefly de described these, and now we're going to go into the, the details of this method. We find the predecessor of the node to insert. So if we want to insert five, we need to find the predecessor node. And uh, if the node is to be inserted is at the head, which is in this case, then the predecessor is the sentinel head. So we're going to tell the sentinel head, hey, point at this list node and not that one, which you see is the green arrow. And we simply delete this connection. If the node is at inserted at the tail, its predecessor then is the last node, which in this case we did the self.size. Inserting the node by changing the link. So we basically remove this link and said, hey, I'm the new person taking this position according to the index value passed, and it will be in the linked list. Now let's code this at, at index again, self. It's a standard thing that we had to write in a class method. It takes in an index, and obviously you can see here, we needed to take an index of int, and we needed to take a value of int. And that value is what the content of the list node will be. And we will want it to return nothing. Oops, sorry. Now we can get rid of the pass. So the first thing we want to make sure is that the index passed is not bigger than the size of the list node, because if it was bigger, then we can't add that. Like if, if, if your list is three and you want to add it to seventh, you obviously can't do that. And if you want to add something, you will obviously want to iterate the size. So if your list node is five and you want to add a list node, then it has to take that and it will be six. So the first step you have to do is you want to find the predecessor of the node. So we're going to save the self.head as the predecessor. Since this is a singly um, linked list, we have to iterate this way. So you must start at the head. Um, and a doubly linked list is a bit different when we will cover that in the next video. But for this video, if you want to iterate on a linked list, you have to start from the head. So we say, hey, get the value of the head. And this is the first predecessor by, by, yeah, by natural selection. Well, no, it's not natural selection by the linked list. So we're going to do, we're going to iterate for the range in the index. So if the index here was five, we want to iterate. And here, that means just the value I ignore. It could have been X, but I'm just trying to tell you, we're not going to use this value whatsoever. Um, and we want you to iterate on the linked list every, by this amount of time. So the, pre, the predecessor is pointing at this. And when we say dot next, it jumps one. Another dot next, it jumps another one. So dot next basically means just, hey, travel through the arrow to the next linked list. So now the new value for your predecessor is exactly the index right before where it should be placed. So if you, if you said zero, then it won't iterate and it will simply be pointing here. But if you said one, then it would be pointing here. The next thing we do is we create another variable, call it to add, which is where we want to add it. Um, and we say a list node of val. So basically we're saying create a list node and give it the value val, which you have it here. And your index here is you've iterated this. So now you're standing at the position where you've iterated in. And now you have a list node with the val. Finally, all you have to do now is actually insert it. So where will you insert it? Right at pred.next. Because you have stopped at the predecessor value. And you want this list node to be the next thing it points at. So to add dot next sorry, we'll point to pred.next. So what we're saying here is wh wherever the predecessor.next was pointing at, I would like the to add.next point at. If you remember here when we created it, the next was none. Now it's basically taking the position of the predecessor. So let's say the predecessor was number two and it was pointing at number three. I have now created this node 
here or let's look at this one here Cle created this node and you've basically shifted this arrow to be here so now number five is pointing at three and then you need the predecessor to point at it and that is basically gonna so your new predecessor dot next will be the two ads right so your predecessor just to revise your predecessor dot next is now pointing at your to add which is a list node containing the value that you have uh, passed to and your to add dot next is passing is pointing at the original predecessor dot next and then you can ask well how did it know what's the predecessor again we have iterated over that list several times so we just created our own the, um, add to index there there is a build in python um where you just do like if i remember correctly dot insert and then you pass in the va the the index let's say five and the value of two but we just build it ourselves here just for you just for you to um understand the idea next let's talk about the oh the delete so I got the delete. I thought I got the get. But let's talk about delete. Again, deleting is quite similar to the insert, but instead of pointing to a node, you delete a node. So we, let's do the normal test. So let's say delete at index. Again, it will take the self and the index value. It, the index value that has to delete. It doesn't need the actual value. You just say, hey, you know what? Delete index 5. Returns none. So if the index is less than 0, or the index is greater than the size then we actually return nothing because there's nothing to delete so this is just uh, putting a save then in the insert we added the size well here obviously we're deleting something so we want to delete the size so now you start to see the similarities here you're reducing the size because you're removing a list node next you want to point at the head which is your first predecessor we also done it here you see and again we iterate the size of the index and we would like our predecessor to be the predecessor next so so to whatever the predecessor next is pointing at that is your actual predecessor now and again it's very very similar and finally deleting a node is in a list node here is simply asking your predecessor next to skip a connection dot next dot next so what you're saying is my predecessor dot next which is this arrow here is pointing at predecessor dot next i want you to point at the predecessor dot next dot next so you're just skipping it and then this goes away um, depends on the programming language there is a garbage collection and so on and so forth but for the purpose of this tutorial we're just simply saying hey just point to the next one and that automatically gets um deleted from the list node now let's talk about the get and get is basically hey give me the value of the list node that indexed something so let's say diff get again we start with self and you pass in the index which value do you want and here it returns returns an int um this is so, oops sorry int so we, we, we pass in an index 5 and it returns us the value of the index. Again, we want to check that we're getting a meaningful value and, and it's not less than or greater than what we have. Next, we want to point our self head to current, which is the current, uh, which is the current list node we're at and then as in all the previous ones we will just simply iterate but since it's always at minus one so if you want the, the the fifth one or the sixth one then it's one more then you would want your current to be the current next so your current value will be to whatever which to be whichever the current dot next is pointing at and we just return car and we access it using the dot value which we have created here so you're accessing the list node value that way again this is to move away from the sentinel node to the 
index that we actually want to look at. I hope this is not confusing you, having it as um, index plus one. We were basically starting at the center and I was like, hey, you know what? If, it, if a person wants the first node, I obviously have to go here and then that's one. If, I, I hope that makes sense. Do, do post your questions underneath if you um, if this was if this part was not clear and that is really it this is how we implement uh, a list node with the this is the template for the list node we initiate it we add something to the head or if you want to add something to the tail if you want to add a specific index and we actually use this for the add to tail and add to head we can also use it to add anywhere else in the index how we delete a node we make sure that we're getting a valid value we iterate and we skip that value. And finally, if we want to get the value of a specific node. Finally, the complexity analysis, the space complexity here is constant because it doesn't matter what's the size of your list node. It will always have the same space complexity. It does not create anything extra. Your time complexity, if you're adding something to the head, you're not iterating. Um, or, or sorry, you're only you're iterating the same regardless of the size. So if whether you have size five or size five hundred, you're iterating the same length. If you're adding to the tail, then you have to iterate over every single list uh, list node, so that will be uh, linear. So if you have ten, then it will iterate ten times. And then in the middle here, I have a typo. It will be okay. Uh, okay, if you want to do an add index or a delete index, where k is the index of the element. So if it's located earlier at the linked list it will be smaller if it's located later it will be um bigger so k can equal to n if you're adding something at the end so this is basically the position if you have any questions please post them below otherwise thank you in the next video i'll be talking about doubly linked lists